Ghost Dance is gone. The Sun Dance is gone. And they told us that it, we were all heathens, that we're no more dancing. Said we have to, you have to do away with it. So they, they poor bit us. They didn't want us together. They didn't want us to dance. You know, all we were doing was just trying to carry on our tradition. Many times I put myself in the, trying to sit back there wondering how it was. I get sad. Why did they have to ban something that was so sacred to us? In 1880, the Kiowa people in Oklahoma were facing the end of a way of life they had known for centuries. The buffalo the Kiowas depended on for food and clothing were being slaughtered. Vast herds that had once numbered in the millions of animals were down to only a few thousand. Yeah, and there was buffalo hunters coming in, where stories told where they would just cut the tongue out and leave the rest. You know, delicacy was tongue and leave the rest to rot. But that was our means of survival. That was our main food source. The United States government wanted to civilize the tribes and no longer allowed these traditionally nomadic people to roam free, forcing them onto reservations. And they told us we're gonna, they would make farmers out of us. They just put them out on, out on the lands, gave them 160 acres, but they didn't know how to, uh, how to uh, survive or how to take care of the land. Large gatherings were banned, dances and religious ceremonies forbidden. And they banned the, the powwows or the gatherings because they were afraid that if we had got that many warriors together, we might have an uprising. By 1890, sacred dances like the sun, the ghost, and the gourd had been halted. The ancient drums of the Kiowa were silent. Their voices, once feared and respected, echoing loudly off the granite walls of the Wichita Mountains, grew faint as they retreated into memory. And then they got us together and told us, if you don't stop your dancing, we're going to stop your rations, and you will start. So our leaders at that time, thinking about the children, and agreed to, you know, they all agreed that we, we must stop. Although many of the Kiowa social and religious dances were lost forever, some traditions survived through private and sometimes secret ceremonies. It was uh, sang in the homes, cellars, teepees down the creek somewhere. The veil was lifted in 1957 at the Anadarko Indian Expo. Tribal elders broke almost a century of silence singing songs younger ears had never heard. And they put on the gourd dance out in front of the grandstand. And uh, a lot of the elders back then that were uh, witnessing this, this pageant were, were thrilled to hear this again, these songs, and uh, they remembered that. Over the decades, many warriors had been killed. A culture had almost died too. But through it all, the spirit of the Kiowas, the red wolf deep in their souls, survived. And today is once again heard across the Wichita. <laughs> To 
today, the Kiowas have blended into a new society, adopted another culture. For some, talk of the old way seems foreign. Oh, she... oh, oh. And far away. The Kiowa language was always spoken, never written. Not a word of it is printed in the pages of history. And only a few elders can remember how to twist their tongues around the syllables. There's not a whole lot that is known for certain. You know, everything's oral. Our history is all oral, what we're told. While the old ways are gone forever, the Kiowa are thankful at least the gourd dance survived. They are intent on carrying on their tradition with every drum beat, every rattle shaken, every song sung. For the people to keep them going, uh, they must know the meanings. Uh, the, the words that are in those songs are very specific. And as you lose those words and they're replaced just by sounds, it really loses the meaning and the focus for those that really know the language. And this is what's always been told to us all the time. How do we keep it alive? How do we keep it going? Well, we do it by our traditions. When I go out there and, and I gourd dance, I, I picture all of my ancestors watching, all my descendants, descendants that I come from. I picture them all watching me and I want to make them proud. I want to make everyone watching me proud. Today, gourd dancing flourishes. It has been taken up by tribes across the country and it can be seen at powwows from coast to coast. But for the Kiowa, the gourd dance is much more than sound and movement. They believe it was a sacred gift given only to them in a time long before they migrated to Oklahoma, a spiritual and legendary time, the time of the Red Wolf. The stories that uh, were told, it, it's, it's important because uh, a lot of times, uh, maybe uh, in the future years to come, I'll, um, I'll, I won't be here. And uh, my art that I do, a little more or less tell of a story of what the legends I've heard before. Artists like Edmund Nevacoya bring the legend to life with their paintbrushes. But for elders like Walter Colleton, this is no colorful tale. It is the black and white of truth. The history of the Gordon Dance has been told to me when we were up north. Cowboys came from the north around uh, Montana and they migrated down south by the Devil's Tower and uh, a man who either went on a, to go look for a vision or either got separated on while hunting. And as he was trying to get back to the tribe, he, he was getting weary and uh, then he heard a singing. Yo ha yo e ha ha yo e ha. So he wondered, where is that sound coming from? I'm trying to put myself back there thinking like he was. So he climbed up over this hill, could hear that sound got louder. And he looked down there and there was a wolf, a red wolf, singing these songs. But when he got through singing, the wolf would go, yo, and then he'd sing another song. It went on and on and on. And he got through singing, and when he got
got through singing, he turned around. Take these songs with you, give to your tribe. And keep them and respect them. And you will keep these songs as long as the cows survive. That same respect for the drum and for the song, born of the wolf's howl so long ago, still exists today. Outside, in the baking heat of an Oklahoma July, they dance. Holding on to the old ways, keeping it Kyle. They pay their respects to the elders by wearing proper dance regalia and singing songs written to honor them. I'm singing songs that my grandparents, great grandparents, they, they were the songs that they were singing. They were, they're very songs they were singing. Back then, they were very special songs. They were made for a family. They were made for a, a warrior, a brave warrior. And they sang them. And I'm, I'm fortunate I can sing them too now. 100 years later, 200 years later, I feel like that's, that's quite an honor for me to be able to sing these songs. Whenever I'm out there gourd dancing, I think of my family. I think about the time whenever I first went out there, which is roughly about seven to eight years old. And I'm thinking about what they told me, which was, uh, you may be out there to dance, but remember that there are people out there that cannot dance. The ones that are suffering in the hospitals, the ones that are in the jails, the ones that, that, are, old, that are old that cannot get out there. Patrick Redbird is proud to dance in front of honored elders like Fred Soodle and Leonard Kozad Sr. Men who were instrumental in the Gord revival of the 50s because they could still remember the ancient words. So he honors the old ones who taught him to dance and the reasons why. When the drum starts and you're sitting there and you're shaking the gourd because you're trying to get into the same beat as the music. So as you're listening to that song, you're getting into the beat, you're starting to move about. It makes you very excited in your heart and in your mind. The pride of being Kiowa. And that's the part that really gets it, the respect, the honor. And this is what Indians were really, our Kiowa people were about. Uh, they were highly respectful people, highly noted for certain attributes, and dancing is one. Like their ancestors, today's Gordon clan remains an all-male society. The words and movements pass down from the confidence of the old to the uncertainty of the very young. But time has forced changes. long sleeve dress shirts replace buckskin. Steel rattles replace the gourds of old. The clan honors not warriors returning from battle, but friends and family for fighting to preserve the Kiowa way of life. Every time we go to a dance, every time we discuss our heritage, who we are, our ancestors are always brought up and what our ancestors went through to get here, to still be able to have our land, to still be able to have our dances, that is the most important thing. All the while, the dancers of today, like the warriors of yesterday, slowly close the circle, building in intensity, moving toward the center of the arena, the center of their spiritual universe. It is the highest honor of a centuries old society. And that was one of the greatest things was to be around in the areas that our ancestors were. And this was one right here. 
Back on a mountaintop deep in the Wichita range, Patrick Redbird, working for the Oklahoma Tourism Department, passes his heritage on like a torch of knowledge. Well, a long time ago, they used gourds. Uh, gourds that you would see on the side of the road or in uh, anybody's type of uh, a garden of some sort. To any who come to see the light. And shook it above his head. That made a rattling noise. And hearing this rattling noise, and knowing that he did something good for his people, he started to sing and to dance. What's going through me at the time whenever I'm talking to young people about uh, dances or Indian ways is reminding them of what Indian people were truly like back then. Uh, that it wasn't we're savages, you know, and we're going to kill you as you come down the road. No, we were people that were quite joyous and quite helpful to help another person if they needed it. You don't really hear a lot about very many Native American people anymore, and everybody's kind of forgetting about them, and so to see this, it kind of sparks it up again. <laughs> To all those elders that had thought about and had a hand in bringing the gourd dance back alive, uh, aho, thank you. Uh, I am so proud and so happy to be Kiowa that I can gourd dance, that I can take part in the arena.